Hey, gonna be delivering your 10 millimeter system today. And so I thought I'd make this video to kind of introduce it. Uh, here it is right here. But in a second, before I start off and talk about what we're gonna be delivering to you, I thought I'd take a moment to talk about what everybody else would be delivering to you with a 10 millimeter system. Well, for one thing, in a typical situation, this is a scanner that would typically be delivered for 10 millimeter application. You see, it's very physically large. The mirror is about like the, this big. This scanner weighs 240 grams, and the mirror and the mount weighs three grams. And so you can see it's quite heavy. It's got a very heavy cable on it, like this. Um, by comparison, here's our little compact 506. Right, so you can see that the entire scanner weighs 12 grams, and in fact, the mirror is actually bigger than the scanner. Right, the mirror in our case is thinner. We can get away with this because we use silicon as a mirror material instead of glass, like the other guys. And silicon is a kind of a space age material that's used for all the, the semiconductor chips that are made these days. And so, because of this, it's stiffer and it can be made lighter and smaller. And so, that's how one of the ways in which we can get away with making something smaller and lighter. So, and what we're gonna be delivering to you is a, an XY system. And here's the, you see this, how this scanner just kind of goes right in there like this. This is the entire XY system sitting in my hand right here. This is what competitors would typically be delivering to you in a 10 millimeter system. You can see the mirror size is pretty similar as it should be. Uh, the difference is the size and the weight of this thing. The entire XY system that we're been delivering today weighs only 110 grams, whereas in my left hand, your right hand view here, uh, this weighs nearly a kilogram. You can see it's much heavier, it is uh, much uh, physically larger, uh, and it, it will um, usually get hotter. So, so and, and then finally, I'll talk about the, the servo driver very briefly. This is the servo driver that we will be delivering. It's our Moth DSP. Uh, and this is a servo driver that a competitor might be delivering for a 10 millimeter application. You can see it's physically larger. It's physically heavier. It takes up more space. It takes up more power and generates more heat. So how is it that Pangolin is able to deliver something so much smaller taking up less space, less weight, requiring less power. How is it that we're able to do this, whereas the other guys are not able to do this? Well, if you come and take a look at this wall right here, we have some of the patents that we've been granted over the years. We've been granted a total of 31 patents so far, and there's only 10 on this wall. There's more of them in our back room. We just kind of ran out of wall space here. And on this shelf over here, you can see some of the awards and accolades that we've received over the years. The point is, is that we think differently. We don't do things in the same old way. And actually, every other scanner manufacturer that's delivering a galvanometer today is doing so based on a design that was invented in 1976, whereas our designs are brand new and they've just been granted patents. So with that, I'll, I'll give you an idea of what we're going to be delivering. You'll be receiving this tomorrow by FedEx. And it's basically in this little grouping right here. It's the XY scanners, cables to connect them to the Mach DSP servo driver, a USB cable to connect this to the computer, and I'll be showing the software here, a couple of other cables so you can get power and signal into here, and a thumb drive that comes with the software. Along with that, there is a quick start guide that tells you what you should be receiving in the package. So you can try to check these things and make sure that you've received everything. Um, and tells you the step-by-step -step procedure to apply power, connect the things, how to do it, and that sort of thing. And then on the reverse side of this, it shows you what it should look like. It gives you a top-down view of the servo driver and what all of these connectors are. And then the very bottom here talks about the tunings because on our software, we offer four separate tunings that are instantly accessible by the click of a mouse. And in this particular customer, they only needed two tunings. And so you see what's happening here, tuning number one, tuning number two, and usually we put a number of kilohertz or 30K or whatever would be in these boxes. But this client needed only two very specific things. You've got a large signal application and this, the, the uh, the tuning number that it's going to start up in because it could start up in any any number of tunings so 
So with that, we've actually already got it configured into this projector right here. I'm just going to be using this as a quick demonstration. And so the main thing is that when you receive this system, plug it all together as described in the Quick Start Guide. And uh, you will definitely want to connect the USB cable. You just connect it right into the computer here and connect it into the Mock DSP servo driver. Make sure every once in a while what will happen to me is I don't get it in all the way. I'll get it like this. Don't just make sure it, you push it all the way in. And so that once you've got that there, then I'll turn on the projector and we will start the software. Like I say, the software will come in this little USB key. And I'm gonna start the software in two different ways. First, when you start the software, and I'm just gonna move it onto the screen right here, this is what you're gonna see. It's got one gigantic button called connect, and that's the one you press. It will connect to the servo driver, and there it is. It tells you the operating voltage of the servo driver, the firmware version, the serial number, and all kinds of status for the X and Y axis, the temperature, and so forth. Uh, and normally, you only get this choice right here of activate tuning one, two, three, and four. Uh, for now, for most clients, this is all they need to access is the tuning number, right? But in your case, what we will do is we will be sending some additional instructions so that once you start the software, it will start up in a different mode, and I'm gonna show you that right now. So when you start the software with this special mode that I'm gonna discuss through email, it will look like this. So what you'll see is a whole lot more options and you have access to the various tuning parameters in the servo driver, including what the TTL lines do um, and so forth. So what I will do here, just to demonstrate a couple of other things about the software, is we have a little test signal generator in here and uh, we have an oscilloscope function built right into the system as well. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do, just to demonstrate this, we'll put uh, input command signal for the x-axis on my yellow trace, and we'll put position for the x-axis on my uh, pink trace here, and maybe the uh, coil current here, and um, coil voltage on this trace here. I'll start it running, and we will just give it some down here in the test signal generator. Usually I just start with 20 hertz and uh, maybe two degrees mechanical. And so what we could see here up in the scope function is we could see the input command signal on yellow. We could see the pink trace, which is the, uh, the position. We could see the coil voltage and the coil current happening here. And all of these are controlled by the scale factor down here. So this is like your vertical adjustment on, the, on a regular conventional oscilloscope. So that if I wanna scale this up to one degree per division. Since I said that I wanted two degrees down here um, from the function generator, you could go on one, two degrees, right? And this is all in mechanical degrees. So, and what we can see over here in the, in this little thing that we're using as a projection surface is it, you know, what it looks like up there. And uh, let me just do one thing here. So get that looking a little bit better. And um, the, the test pattern generator, what we could do is we could generate a, an in-phase square wave that looks like that. We could generate a quadrature square wave, looks like that, or a quadrature sine wave, right? So, so the main thing is that um, normally you won't really be messing with this, but I'm just kind of showing you some of the capabilities of the system if you wanted to explore this. So normally you will be putting a signal into the servo driver at this connector right here. Um, and it's the analog command signal. In, in the future, we will have on these little uh, expansion connector right here, we will have a little XY2100 board where people could go directly with serial digital command right into the servo driver. Um, but normally that's how you operate. You don't operate with this, but I'm just using this as a way of demonstrating what could be done. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I've got my quadrature square wave running there. I'll make it uh, a little bit bigger here. And, um, and what we'll do, I'll, I'll demonstrate a couple of parts of the software up in this area. I, I really only expect you to be messing around with these particular parameters in the software. This is the input scale. This is, this is how many degrees uh, of motion you get based on the command signal coming into it. 
This is input offset, which I'll show here in a second, and shear, which I'll also show here in a second. So um, we'll point to this mock projection surface here, and I just select the x-axis. And as, as I move this input offset, what you can see is that I'm able to position the projection left to right if I select the x, or up and down if I select the y. And so you could use this for fine positioning. So in other words, what you could do is um, use the Allen wrench here to adjust this um, on the scanner and get it kind of roughed in, uh, and then use this offset control here to, to get it fine-tuned. Uh, and now if you had to, if, if you do not have the, the beam coming directly straight into the mount like this, if you got it coming up at an angle or going left and right, something like that, it will cause the projection to look like that. In this case, it looks like keystone because I'm projecting a little bit off axis. But we also have the shear here. And what the shear will do is as I increase it, what you'll see, uh, it's a little bit difficult to see with this, with this kind of square wave projection, but it basically kind of shears the entire image. It's kind of like a rotation. Uh, in fact, if I do it on both X and Y at the same time, it should be like a real rotation, isn't it? Uh, like I say, it looks a little bit funny on this because it's a square wave uh, projection, but with a real, um, with a regular um, input signal that's, a, that's an image, this will actually allow you to rotate the, uh, the image to correct for non-orthogonal uh, beam inputs and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, so basically that's it. On the, on the title bar here, it tells you which tuning number is active. Here it says tuning number two is active. And uh, there's this menu up here that says tuning. And to activate the other tuning, you just click on that menu item. And you'll notice that now tuning number one is active. Now there's a lot of stuff that's stored in a tuning. All of the servo settings and everything else, the shear, input offset, scan, all the servo tuning parameters are stored there. But also all the oscilloscope parameters and also the function generator parameters are stored with a tuning. So this is important because one of the things you notice is that it's no longer scanning, right? And so if I want to make this smaller, what I will need to do is uh, scale this down, let's say to 12 and you know whatever I, is I, I need for my application, and then say, save this to tuning number whatever I want, right? So uh, I say save to tuning number one. Is gonna ask me if are you sure you want to save it to tuning number one? I could say yes. In this case, I'm gonna say no because I don't want to kind of mess up something I've already got set up for you guys. So, so that's a big picture. So one thing also important: whenever we deliver multiple systems, as we will be today, uh, you notice this says 8101, and the other one says 8103. This corresponds to the serial number on the X scanner itself. If you take a close look there, you'll see that it has a serial number there. And so you just wanna make sure that you have the XY scanners paired up correctly with the servo driver that's intended to go for that. If, if you don't, it's not gonna be a tragedy. Every scanner is a little bit different. Uh, it just won't give you the optimal performance. And in the servo driver itself, once you start the software, it will tell you the serial number of the software right there. Um, yeah, so that's it. So, so basically that's kind of the big picture, get, kind of give you an idea of what we're going to be delivering to you, what you can expect to see, and so um, you'll be receiving the package by FedEx tomorrow, and uh, let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.